JMTC is really the place where the Army's operating concept is sort of on full display. We are uniquely in the Army a place where every single day an officer, an NCO, a soldier has the opportunity to work with his allies on tactical tasks and on operational tasks. The facilities and the training capabilities at Grafenbeer and Hohenfels are absolutely world class. We have a full service, full suite force on force training center just like JRTC or NTC at Hohenfels. In addition to that, we have a simulation center. But I think the most powerful thing that JMTC has is the fact that all of those capabilities reside under one command. So um, I, as the commanding general at 7th ATC and JMTC, have a full sim center, a full combat training center, a full live fire range complex, and I'm able to tie those all together to create live virtual constructive training events that are distributed across multiple different locations and um, are multi-echelon in nature. When I'm curious now, with all of these assets at hand, where's the challenge? It's very challenging to make all of these things happen because you're bringing together the training calendars and therefore the training resources of multiple independent countries. So we have something called a combined training conference. It happens uh, every six months. Last time we did it, we had 37 countries and we all come together and we basically do an enormous training meeting. We put a huge calendar on the wall and we say JMTC is doing exercises on this date, this date, this date. The training objectives for this one are such and such. These are the sorts of participants we're looking for. And then we solicit participation based on the training objectives and the sorts of task organizations we need for those, for those uh, uh, exercises. The NATO forces, are they receptive? We have a great deal of enthusiasm. In the past six months at our live fire complex, 24 different countries fired. Why do so many countries come there to fire? Because we have unique capabilities. We can fire multiple launch rocket systems. We have managed the airspace. It's restricted airspace over Grafenberg. We frequently have between five and 12 countries participating simultaneously. We will have a task organization where an American brigade and has two American battalions, a Czech battalion, an Albanian company. We always have multinational participation in our exercises. 56% of the soldiers who have come through the combat training center at Hohenfels last year were not U.S. soldiers. What about the training standards? There has been a big push to get everybody to come together on NATO standards. NATO has always had standards and doctrine, but it has existed sort of at two levels. There were DANAGs, um, standing agreements, about how to do things how much a 5.56 five, ball round should weigh, uh, um, how to call for fire, things like that. And then the other place we had interoperability doctrine in NATO was at the core level and above. So one of the things we're doing at JMTC is really with USER pushing the envelope uh, inside NATO. We are putting together multinational brigades and insisting that they work on, on decisive action combat tasks in vivo, full live acts, at training centers. Okay, so along with standards, what about equipment? I know over the years yeah. there has been a real challenge with some of the simple equipment. Some nations don't have or can't afford the high-tech gear that we have. What we do is really individually look at each of the countries independently. The actual equipment matters less than the intentions of what to do with it and how to employ it. But when it gets down to it, I mean, I've been out in the field. Yeah. And I've been in some of these exercises, and I have seen soldiers from Belgium, for instance, unable to communicate with the yeah. troops from Poland yeah. because they're working with different radio sets. Yeah. yeah. And so they didn't know how to move forward or when to move forward. Kind of doesn't matter that that much if your if your tank is a Soviet era tank and my tank is a is a U.S. era tank. That that, that can be put together. We can figure that out. Uh, it it kind of doesn't matter if you've got good rain gear and I don't. It it, it kind of doesn't matter if your rifle is you know the greatest rifle in the world or, or a rifle. That stuff kind of doesn't matter. The things that matter are communication systems and intelligence systems. Those we just can't get past. And those are some of the hardest things to make interoperable. When the communications interoperability is impossible to achieve because of a technical reason, that is, the country does not own 
stuff that can do this. Then we illuminate that with the chiefs of their defense and the chiefs of their land forces. And we tell them, you know, the only issue we've got here is your country doesn't have type one encryption and, and therefore you're unable to participate in the top tier of the net. So talk to me about the Intel challenge. Intel is a very, very difficult one because of course we all have national intelligence that is uh, not shareable with foreigners. But we all have operational intelligence, that is intelligence that we generate from the battlefield through reconnaissance, and those are the things that we need to share in a common domain. So bottom line, JMTC, yeah. what does it mean to the U.S. military? This is really a place where you can work in a multinational sphere on your professional specialty.